Hello, and welcome to a sunny book knock. Today, I'm doing something a little different. I'm starting a reading vlog. A reading vlog, I know. I haven't done one of those in a really fucking long time. That's because I don't use my camera for a reading vlog, so my camera's like really hefty, and I don't have a mic. So, I, you know, it's just hard. It's hard, it's hard for me to do vlogs. But I was like, fuck it, like I'll do it. Like I think it'll be fun because everyone's talking about the Goodreads Choice Award. So I'm pulling that up on my laptop right here. If you hear my laptop buzzing, it's because I have like a million tabs open, uh, as one always does. I'm wearing a sports bra right now and pants, but it's because I don't want to get makeup on my shirt because I'm going to wear a button up on top of this and it's silk and it's vintage and it's, I'm excited to put it on because it's like 65 degrees out. So my window is open and I'm feeling good, you know? So here's my plan for my Goodreads Choice Award reading vlog. I have decided to read all of the opening round science fiction nominees, because I've already read a couple of them, I'll get into that, but only the ones written by women, because I tweeted this like earlier today when I was thinking about doing this, um, you know, this spontaneous little reading vlog. I'm using like the last fucking dredges of my CC cream from IT because it has SPF and it's pretty sunny out today. So, but yeah, I want to read the science fiction novels written by women because the ones written by men in here don't really interest me. And I also don't really care that much about the Good Read Choice Awards because like, you know, awards are dumb and fake anyways. But I think it'll be fun to just get through, like read them, you know? I'm just gonna go through them. So the first book that's on here that's written by a woman is Girl One by Sarah Flannery Murphy. I have no fucking clue what this book is about, so. And then the other book is The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey, which I started reading a while back and I still have it saved on Scribd. So I will finish that and let you know my thoughts, but I'm like a fourth of the way into this and like I start and not finish a lot of books, so it's not really that indicative of how much I like or don't like it. I think I was just like not in the mood and then they kept putting it off. But it just feels really gloomy and dark. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for that. But maybe on an overcast day sometime this week, I will check it out and continue with it because it's about, it's a clone story. There's a wife who's a scientist and her husband's scientist like uses her clone tech that she makes to make another version of her so that the other version of her can like have his babies or whatever, you know, some fucked up shit like that. So that's the other book written. And okay, so there's one, two, there's 11 books written by women in the science fiction opening round nominees. And there's 20 nominated books in total. So, you know, majority women, that's cool. Uh, especially in a genre like science fiction that has been historically so dominated by men, gag. Which is why I'm not going to give them any of my attention, especially because their books are kind of boring. Like there's the Andy Weir book, I'm never going to read The Martian, never going to read his other books. I don't care what people say, I'm not reading them. <laughs> um, and the other ones, um, I don't know, they just look kind of dumb. I'm just not going to read them. So this vlog is just going to be me reading the books by the girlies. So. Yeah, and if you're offended by that, well, sorry for you. I'm going through this in the list that was presented, like in the order that it's being presented to me on the Goodreads website. The next book written by a woman that's on here is called Winter's Orbit, and it looks like it's a space book. So I will get to that one. Hopefully I'll see where I can find it. I'll give you updates as to where I am going to be reading it from. And then, okay, this other book. The next book on here written by a woman is Machinehood by S.B. Divya. And I rated this five stars. I read it earlier this year and I fucking loved it. We follow the perspectives of a couple different people. And I remember like it's except in the future and there's a lot of commentary and structures about capitalism and class exploitation. And then like the other and uh, militarism and space encounters. It was really interesting and it was really, really well done, I think. So really enjoyed that one. 
And the next book written by a woman on here is A Desolation Called Peace by Arcady Martin. And I think it's the second book in her series. Um, and to be honest, I tried reading the first book called A Memory Called Empire. And it wasn't really that interesting to me. So I don't think I will read this because I hate when Goodreads nominates or when people on the Goodreads like Choice Awards nominees are sequels. Because it's like, I'm not going to read the fucking... I mean, okay, well, I'm about to contradict myself. But the next book that is on this list, I have a physical copy of. Whoa. Um, and that is Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. And I picked this up at the bookstore like a couple months back. And I think the person who wrote this is a trans Asian woman. So that's cool. The description says... Shizuka Satomi made a deal with the devil. To escape damnation, she must entice seven other violin prodigies to trade their souls for success. She has already delivered six. When Katrina Wen, a young transgender runaway, catches Shizuka's ear with her wild talent, Shizuka can almost feel the curse lifting. She's found her final candidate. But in a donut shop off a bustling highway in the San Gabriel Valley, Shizuka meets Lan Tran, a retired starship captain, interstellar refugee, and mother of four. Shizuka doesn't have time for crushes or coffee dates, but what with her very soul on the line, but Lan's kind smile and eyes like stars might just redefine a soul's worth. And maybe something as small as a warm donut is powerful enough to break a curse as vast as the California coastline. So it feels very California, queer, sapphic. The next book in here is the thing that I contradicted myself with, and that is the sixth book in the Murder Bot Diary series. I think I've read almost all of the other ones. This one is called Fugitive Telemetry. Okay, so I still need to read Exit Strategy Network Effect, but they're like really short novellas, so once I finish Exit Strategy and Network Effect, then I will read Fugitive Telemetry. And then the next book written by woman is Remote Control by Nydia Corfor. This has been in my Libby holds for a while, for like the past six months on and off. I keep on trying to read it and then like forgetting about it. So yeah, I've liked Nydia Corfor's other work that I've read from her. I think I've read like three of her books at this point. And then the next book written by a woman on here is called The End of Men by Christina Sweeney Baird. If the description tells me that it reminds me of The Handmaid's Tale, okay, the description says, set in a world where a virus stalks our male population, The End of Men is an electrifying, forgettable debut, unforgettable debut from a remarkable new talent that looks, what would our world truly look like without men? Only men carry the virus, only women can save us all. I don't know, it's, that's, feels very cis-centric, I guess. The next book written by a woman I also have with me, I know, shocker, and that is A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. I already talked ooh, already talked about this. I fucking love this book so much. It's so beautiful to me. It's so beautiful. I loved it. So yeah, honestly, I can't right now with the books that I have read, I can't pick between this and Machine Hood because they're both so good. So based off of those two books that I've read so far from the women on this list, I feel like the other books on this list are going to be pretty good too. And then the last book on here is called Firebrain. And it's about an orphan of a corporate world, a corporate war. So that is what we are working with. I am excited. I'm excited. It's true to get to all of these um, I will keep you updated. I think the book I'm going to start with is going to be the Martha Wells novellas, like, because I need to get through a couple of them in order to get to the book that was, like, actually nominated. But then after that, I will update you with what books are available to me through my library or if I end up, like, I don't know, getting physical copies of them instead of just the digital library stuff that I usually go with because I love a digital library. Libby app, Hoopla app, Scribd, which you have to pay for, but you know, still kind of a digital library of a sort. I love you. I love you apps that you are wonderful to me. So I, that's what I will be doing. 
Need to finish my makeup. Need to go get COVID tested. Sorry, I haven't eaten lunch today. Maybe I should go do that. Maybe I have a lot of work I need to do that I'm trying to not think about. I have a dance class in the afternoon or in the evening. In the afternoon, I am going to go pet someone's dog. I'm so excited to go pet their dog. Um, because the dog is literally the sweetest thing in the whole wide world. If I mention my Twitter a lot, it's because that shit is literally like my public diary. I never stop tweeting. It's an addiction. It's bad. I'm very insane on there. So please don't follow me if you're expecting a normal person's behavior. Or like you can mute me or whatever because I really, I'm really a little bit unhinged. A lot unhinged on that app. So sorry in advance if you do follow, if you follow me right now. Sorry, but also if you choose to follow me, that's your prerogative and that's your problem, but <laughs> it's very interesting being on both sides of the niche micro-influencer pipeline. I was talking about this with my podcast co-host because if you didn't already know I'm at a podcast, so I know I talk about it all the time. Usually I don't really use the milk makeup like lip and cheek color thing on my lips because I like how it looks on my cheeks right now, but I'm lazy. I don't want to go get a lip product right now, so this is what we are going with. It's not like the entire week leading up to this day, working on editing that shit. And like when I tell you it takes me at least 10 hours to edit an episode, I am not exaggerating. And this episode was especially long because we were talking about Red Taylor's version and then also like a bunch of hot takes that people submitted. I had to cut from like Th over three hours to like maybe two hours 40 minutes and even though that doesn't sound like a lot it's not like one individual chunk that i have to remove it's like one to 20 second chunks there's so many space books on here that's kind of crazy okay so there's 11 books that i'm gonna be reading because i don't want to read the arcade book i'm not reading the men <laughs> And these are all the open opening rounds nominees. So that's what we are doing. Those are those are the 11 books that I'm reading for this vlog, but I've already read two of them. So I'm really reading nine books, but I also have to read two other books in order to read the novella. So technically I'm still reading 11 books for this vlog. I know, confusing. We're gonna go outside because it's so fucking lovely out and read a little because I'm procrastinating and I don't want to do my work. I am not going to be reading Girl One, which is the, I think, number one uh, in the chronological order that Goodreads gave me. I'm not gonna be reading that book because it has a Handmaid's Tale description in it, and I just, I cannot stand a dystopian sci-fi novel with a Handmaid's Tale comparison in its blurb. It makes me sick to my stomach. I'm sick of them. I'm sick of them. Ugh. And because, you know, Margaret Atwood is like annoying, like white feminist, like trans exclusionary, shit like that. Right? Which leaves eight books that I am going to actually read based off of the, I think 11, was it? Books by women? Yeah, so there's 12 books on here that are written by women, but I'm not going to be reading Girl One. I'm not going to be reading last watch and not going to be reading a, a desolation called peace because it's the second book in a series that i don't want to read which means that i am technically only reading nine books but because i've already read two of them i'm going to be reading seven of the books on this list but in order for me to read seven of those books i have to read another book the prequel to the murder bot novella but there's actually two books in the series behind the murder bot diaries before i need to read there's also a novel before it but the thing is is that the goodreads nominated novella is taken place before and that's the sixth book the events of the sixth book take place before the fifth book which is a novel so a full-length novel and i'm not reading a fucking full-length novel to read a novella that takes place you know what i mean you know what i mean you know what i mean so yeah I will be reading eight books for this vlog. I got some fucking Starbucks. It's really windy outside, so I'm not gonna talk that much, but I'm like halfway through, if not more, into the murder bot book. What's it called? Exit Strategy by Martha Wells. I am almost halfway through this, so I'm liking it so far. I think I've told you this in previous wrap-ups, but I think all of these books in the series are like three, four, 
ish star books like the whole series is like a three four star for me it doesn't really click with me in the way a lot of other sci-fi does but it's still like solid it's so beautiful out today oh my god okay so i finished the novella but i finished it and i liked it again like i said earlier today i always enjoy the books i think what is most enjoyable about this series is the sort of meta narrative going on in which okay, i'm gonna read it three stars on goodreads i just now started the next book which is the book that was actually nominated and so i started fugitive telemetry i don't think i i don't know if i'm saying that right but i just now started it and we i don't want to should i spoil things okay i'll spoil things so hashtag spoilers for the murderbot series it's interesting seeing murderbot turn into a humanoid creature in both physical and intellectual ways i mean the humanity element of him starts really kicking in when he starts consuming human media and that is a through line throughout the entirety of the book and at this point, like, he's actually being treated like a human by a lot of people and he's developing actual relationships with people because, like, by the end of the book, he has a level of autonomy that he never has before. So I'm excited to see where Fugitive t Telemetry goes. And it seems like the ratings, all of the books in the series, okay, the first book in the series has like 100,000 ratings and like an average of 4.16. All of the average ratings on this on Goodreads is above four, which like is pretty solid, especially considering how like the fourth book, the one that I just read has almost 50,000 ratings. And the book I'm starting now has like 24,000. So this is a well-beloved series from what I can tell. I am going to go to dance class but after that, hopefully I will be getting done with or gotten through the majority of Fugitive Telemetry. Okay, hi. It is the next day of my, oh my gosh, the sun. Ah, catching the sun rays. So I finished, why do I keep on forgetting? I finished this book and it was pretty good. It was pretty fun. I like seeing how Murderbot has been developed and its character and yeah so i rated it three stars in goodreads and now i have started my next book i am going to keep listening to the audiobook for firebreak which i started earlier today um so that's the next book i'm gonna be reading yeah okay it is night time on a friday night and i was just at a protest um, and now I'm heading over to shoot a music thing, this a show, um, throughout the public transportation navigation, that rhymes, um, a whole process of this. I've been listening to, to the audiobook and I've been really enjoying it. I'm waiting for the bus right now again, um, but I've been really enjoying it. I think in the description it was compared to Ready Player One and that makes a lot of sense to me because it is about like a video game and this girl navigating a situation where she gets hired to find out more information about certain players in this game it's a very interesting look at like celebrity culture ai media corporations war in like a very redder player one ready player one-esque type of way so but of course main characters are women Duh. <laughs> I was reading Firebreak while eating dinner and I'm on chapter like 16 out of 24 or something I think and oh my god it's like actually making me emotional it's you know set in a dystopian world where like corp this corporation runs everything and like you know tech is obviously a huge part of it. how the world operates is that this corporation controls the water supply the electricity and like tech so there's this thing called like power curfew where at the end of the day every day everything shuts off and everyone has like instead of you know phones and stuff they have like lenses in their eyes that they can you know see screens on and there's water rations so you have to every day like wait in line for the company to give you water and there's like obviously the company guards everywhere and there's these like celebrity super soldiers that are called like o2 or, or 08 and other numbers there's like a bunch of merch sold of them and stuff and it's just so heartbreaking as we're seeing this rebel group and our main character sort of lead a rebellion sort of thing she and her gaming partner and the six other people that she lives with 
in an abandoned hotel are basically getting threatened by the government slash corporation because it's the same thing. There's this other thing that's going on in the background called the corporate wars where there's these two massive corporations that like rule all of America basically and what, well, what was once known to be America and they're you know they battle it out and many people have died because of it and so our main character as well as all of her friends and all the other characters we know in the book are war orphans they don't have any living family left I, I think like this sort of anti-capitalist anti-war anti-corporate messaging that's going on here is is very it's very smart. It's, I mean, it's on the nose, but not in a way that's dumb. Like it's, it's pretty, it's subtle in some ways. And also our main character has that sort of like Katniss Everdeen situation where she's not a natural born leader. Like she's not really good at like making speeches or whatever. And she's not always the best at making decisions and leader. Like she just kind of backed into a corner. She's put in this position where all the eyes are on her and she has to be really strategic about what she's doing. So it's a lot of discussion about the internet and like how the internet interacts with people who are trying to lead rebellion groups. And it was genuinely like making me emotional sort of hearing about the fictional rebellion organizing because it was like so, it reminded me so much of so many things, so many of the things that go on like in in the real world i'm really enjoying this so far i think it's really smart it's really fast paced it reminds me of a lot of my favorite like sci-fi dystopian pieces of media like like snowpiercer or like sorry to bother you it's really giving that with this added element of technology that is so integrated into the human body and then also like there's this gaming component of a video game world where you are playing a soldier in the corporate war basically and there's like all these little and the parallels between that and the real world that our main character is experiencing in real life as like you know the riot police are coming after her for you know exposing the truth and it's I don't it's just so it's pretty good like I don't know what to say I understand why this is on the sci-fi of the Goodreads 2021 and it does remind me of similar themes and stuff of the other books that have been nominated particularly Machine Hub by SV Divya like it's not similar in a lot of ways but the sort of the themes of technology and interacting with the government and exposing like corporate lies I think is thematically similar so and it, that's even like a big piece of the puzzle in the Murderbot Diaries which I think like it just kind of sh goes to show what sci-fi is as a genre even I mean speculative fiction and sci-fi has always been about criticizing the world around you and building other worlds in order to make that criticism and also imagine different worlds you know as Ursula Le Guin all, all said all organizing is science fiction and it's just like, I don't know, that's why I love this genre so much. So yeah, I'll keep you updated when I'm finished with the book. Hopefully, I'll probably check in with you when I'm done with it. But so far, I'm like really, really enjoying this. Towards the beginning, at first I was thinking, oh, this is some like YA dystopian, like, mm, like I've seen this before, it's not that special, whatever. But it is pretty compelling and I am enjoying it so far. You know how in like action movies and in like horror movies you just want to scream at the character and be like no you forgot about this or no you gotta go do that that's the kind of reader i am and that's what i'm feeling right now i'm almost done with the book i think like towards the towards the end and wow it's it's really putting me through it i'm going through it i am the action the torture the the scene ugh that's how I feel <sighs> oh my god so I finished Firebreak and I am destroyed that was so intense and that was so good like I think that might be a five star read maybe a 4.5 I don't know I don't know oh that book had me in its clutches I haven't felt that way in such a long time over a book. Wow. Wow. It was so good. It was like an action-packed thriller sci-fi movie, but more complex because we get to, because unlike a movie, you get to see, you get to hear all of the actual thoughts of the character and since we're in the first person's perspective of 
the orphan girl, streamer, gamer girl, who ends up exposing the corporations for what they are, and the ending is somewhat open-ended. It That is really what cemented it to be like similar to one of my favorite movies ever that I referenced earlier, um, Snowpiercer, directed by Bong Joon-ho, which is itself an adaptation of a French comic, I'm pretty sure. But the sort of narrative of we, in a future world after almost apocalyptic collapse when like a massive company controls everything and there's manufactured violence and war that is parallel to a lot of violence that occurs on the day today and within near and past history of the world that we live in like i just think that the messaging was really really strong and compelling and didn't do the thing that I feel like a lot of hero narratives push because in this book there are quite a few like heroes and perceptions of who is a hero and I think a lot of this genre and this type of book tries to push a narrative that the person who like saves everyone or tries to is somehow like uniquely powerful or you know have their own capabilities i mean this is just true for like any fantasy sci-fi novel right like the main character is the person who's like special for some reason or another for having magic for having like but in this book that isn't the case like and i think that is the case in reality too like people are victimized by their circumstances and due to circumstances of not none of their control they end up being put in situations where they end up being the face of rebellion or they end up being like something someone needs to do something about this or they end up exposing the truth and i think that the usage of technology in this book as well as the violence and gore and horror and world building throughout this was just so well crafted it felt so viscerally real, but it was just so good. I liked it a lot. I think I'm gonna go on Goodreads and give it five stars. So, yeah. Ugh, I don't even know what book I'm supposed to read next because that was so good. Firebreak, oh my God, you were so good. Anyway, it is evening and I'm not tired because I basically slept the whole day. I think I might keep reading another book. I'll let you know. But I also have other things I need to do, but also like I don't really want to do them, you know what I mean? Like, uh, we'll see. So I started The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey, and I don't like it! I'm remembering why I put this book down. I think I'm gonna DNF it. Sorry, sorry to this project, but sorry to this vlog. But I don't like it. I think Sarah Gailey's writing style just doesn't really fit well with what I like to read. Um, it's like simultaneously too vague and too detailed in some ways. I don't know, like it gets into details that I don't really care about and not enough into details that I do care about. It just disappoints me almost every time, so I'm just gonna stop picking up her stuff. But that's gonna be a DNF. <laughs> I will go through the list of books that I need to read and then I'll update you with what I think I'm gonna read next. So. I just did my makeup. Good morning. <laughs> I have to run off, but before I do that, I've been sitting on this package for so long. My friend, Noxy, the person who made my watermelon earrings, I think I plugged them in one of my recent videos. They made me a pair of lavender earrings and my podcast co-host you know our podcast is called the lavender menace my podcast co-host got a pair of these wob a couple weeks back oh, this is just so sweet oh my goodness so i'm gonna go grab breakfast after i put these in and i purposefully did my lavender makeup today a little bit you know so that perhaps i could match and i think think that worked in terms of reading i think today i'm gonna start orbits winter i'm pretty sure that's what that book's called i'm pretty sure and i'll keep you updated on that i think it's like a 12 hour long audiobook so cute thanks so much noxy of course plugging their instagram again so i'm only like five percent into winter's orbit 
but I have a sneaking suspicion <laughs> that this is like a forced arranged marriage in space type of sci-fi novel. Like it's giving rom-com so far, but it's gay. So yeah, I'm down. And it's cute so far. Our main characters haven't even met yet. Our low interests haven't met. It's a political alliance. I'm excited to see where this goes. I've been needing something a little bit more fluffy, a little bit more light because a lot of sci-fi is dark, it's heavy out here, right? So I will keep you updated with my thoughts, of course. <laughs> okay, so I am like 70% of the way through Winter's Orbit. And I think the last time I checked in with you, I was letting you know that it was sort of like a romance in space. And it's definitely still that, but it is that, but with like a mystery element, there's some sort of secret espionage crime thing going on. And because one of our main characters is an imperial prince and the other person is someone from one of the smaller planets that has been sort of um, put into the larger empire and he kind of acts as a diplomat, we're kind of seeing that their relationship in the ways that there's this tenseness and they're both trying to guess what the other person thinks because there's political and national lines as well as their own like relationship at stake. But the political and national issue is like, it's like actually really substantial. The natural comparison one could make is to Red, White, and Roll Blue by Casey McQuiston because it's another like fake arranged like dating situation. But like in that book, the stakes were much lower, I guess. <laughs> um, well, n maybe not like kind of, okay. In Orbit's Winter, like there's a whole like crime investigation going on and the the diplomat character love interest is the one being investigated and yeah so there's definitely a lot of like internal politics going on and i don't know i think this book is saying interesting things i mean i not really like there's it plays with like bureaucracy and like conversations about like colonialism and and ruling powers and the military but I don't really know exactly what it's saying yet. But I think that the romance elements are cute. There's like definitely playing into a lot of tropes. There was a like a sharing a bed, forced sharing a bed trope almost. Like like need to snuggle together to stay warm. Cause you know, like th those types of things that I think are cute. I, I, but I feel like some of the world building is, and like in the understanding of the political system isn't necessarily fleshed out that much in the writing. Like we see some elements of it, but nothing is necessarily fully explained. I feel like in, in a way that is both interesting and integrated into the text and also, I don't, but maybe that's just me not picking up on it, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, we are at like a peak of intrigue where something really interesting is happening right now so i'll check with you check in with you when i'm done with this book probably but so far i'm really enjoying it i think i'll give it like a four star rating maybe 3.5 like depending on where it goes from here but yeah lots of lots of cute fun time so far good morning it's a couple days after i filmed our last clip that you just saw and it's just because i've not been feeling too well unfortunately but i wanted to come in and say that i did finish winter's orbit and i really really enjoyed it i gave it four stars it ended up being more of a mystery and more of a political intrigue thriller situation than like a romance and all the like sex scenes like were fade to black so there's that and it was a lot of like uh what's the word it's like mutual pining but you know they don't know that the other person likes them you know so it was cute and i think that some elements of the world building were it wasn't like that fleshed out but it didn't really need to be i don't think so yeah i enjoyed it but it definitely wasn't like my favorite like it's not above firebreak or machine hood um for me what i've been doing is mostly like planning videos and stuff and i think i'm gonna film today i'm gonna try to get out a couple like film a couple videos so i have stuff on deck and I think I have a few more, according to my notebook, I have a few more books that I need to finish for this vlog. And I noticed here on my list that I already DNF the Echo Wife and I know I'm not gonna read Girl One. And I'm realizing that like <laughs> the, the range of books that I'm actually reading for this vlog is like narrowing, but it's because I'm not, I'm a mood reader. Like the fact that I'm even doing this vlog and forcing myself to read a, a, a set of amount of books that like other someone else told me to read 
is a lot for me <laughs> because I hate reading books that I don't feel like reading. So I'm giving myself some wiggle room in terms of like, okay, I know I'm not gonna like this or like I'm like 25% into this like with the Echo Wife and I'm just like not reading it, not finishing it. So I'll let you know if I DNF any other ones, um, which might happen, but yeah, I'll let you know. I still haven't figured out what exactly I wanna start next. Good morning. I started um, the Nettie Corfor book. What's it called? What's it called? I'm literally, okay, I never remember the titles of books, but it's up here. I'm sorry, I started this book, I'm gonna go fourth of the way through. We're following the perspective of like six, seven year old girl. And I've read, I feel like, a lot of Nettie Okorafor, and she uses a lot of similar motifs, I'm noticing. I'm not mad about it, I'm not mad about it, but I think it's, like, familiar. And her tone is, like, very particular to her writing style, so. I currently have been, this morning, well, I woke up at, like, noon, it's, like, one right now. Um, I stayed up late recording a podcast episode, and right now I am editing that, um, as you can see. And then I'm also working on, well, okay, I'm watching this, like, YouTube channel called Real Talk TV. And I'm watching all their Taylor Swift reaction videos because, I don't know, because I want to. I, I'm, I'm kind of loving it. And, of course, editing the podcast stuff. The video content is, like, available for Patreon subscribers. I'm not a K-pop stan, by the way. This is not my stuff. <laughs> I just need to clarify that. So fucking mess well it is because i like woke up and i haven't been doing anything but i did my skincare routine this morning i um put on my sunscreen michelle fawn has recently uploaded and like she is the blueprint in terms of beauty gurus so I, and she was like doing and i was watching her videos the other day and she just like really inspired me to get back into like my whole you know like skincare routine before i put slather on makeup or whatever but today I'm going to work on editing. I'm gonna work on, I think I'm going to film a video, but I need to get ready for that first. That's what I'm gonna be doing today. And while I'm holiday shopping on the commute and also when I'm just walking around the mall or whatever, I will be listening to the Nettie Okorafor novella and I'll keep you updated with my thoughts on it. But yeah, that's all. Themselves, the birds of prey. So today I got some stuff like for my room. Oh shit, it fell. I was gonna show you something, but now I realize it literally fell. Anyway, this is what I wanted to show you. I got this little like moon hangy thing. Anyway, um, I wanted to check in with you because I right now am sorting through, like you saw my desk, all the gifts and stuff that I got with my holiday shopping situation. And I've been sorting through them, sorting through the stuff that I got for myself because I had to get some stuff for myself and then the stuff that I got for other people. And then, uh, yeah, while I was doing all of that, I told you that I would listen to Remote Control by Nettie Okorafor, and I did. I finished this. I rated it four stars. Um, I think I don't know, I don't know whether I enjoyed it more so than Winter's Orbit. I think they're pro like, they're just such different books. Like, this is a novella, and it's not about romance. It's about a young girl growing up in Ghana, and her, the way that she is like a spirit um and like her coming of age and then the sort of political implications of all the places that she goes so that was really interesting and i think i might like it a little bit more than winter's orbit because i i'm thinking about it now because winter's orbit was much more of it, it was written like a romance in at least the style of writing like you can tell that the person who wrote that book has a background in writing like fan fiction. Whereas Nettie Okorafor, I have read a lot of her work from the stuff that she's written in 2014 to the stuff that she's written in like 2017. And she very much has a background in like Afrofuturist sci-fi. So I think that it was really, it was, it was really smart and it felt almost mythological in a way that I really enjoy, similar to like, almost similar to like How Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson is. So yeah, I think right now my ranking is Winter's Orbit at the bottom, not because I didn't like it, because it was still a four-star book, four-star book, just like in the context of the other books. Winter's Orbit, Remote Control, 
Machine Hood by S.B. Divya, uh, Firebreak, and then A Psalm for the Wild Build. I think that's what I'm doing right now. It's just hard to rank because all these books are really, really good. Like, I really enjoy all of them. So I know that if I was reading all, all of the books that were nominated and not just the women who were nominated, and within that, the women that I want to read and <laughs> not the books that I DNF'd or am choosing not to read, I know obviously it'd be easier to rank because I know that I wouldn't like those books, but because I know that I wouldn't like those books, I'm not gonna pick it up, you know? So the next books that we have left are Light from Uncommon Stars. I think I'm gonna try to read this tomorrow, but uh, yeah, that is all I have for you tonight. I'm gonna continue watching Birds of Prey. Uh, <laughs> I just finished it and now I'm watching it again because I'm waiting on my laundry, so. I have to go pick up my laundry when it's done. But I'm also kind of hungry. I don't know. It's late, but I love to do things when it's laid out. Uh, when it's late. So I'm going to be sorting through all this stuff that's on my desk and trying to organize and allocate gifts. <laughs> so I love gift giving. I love it so much. It's like one of my favorite things to do like as a human being person, but it requires organization. Anyway, Putting this back. Oh, also another like mini haul. Obviously I'm not gonna go through all the different gifts and stuff that I got. Okay, I got two books and they're both comics. They're, cause I was gonna say, speaking of Birds of Prey, I'm literally, I picked up the comics of Birds of Prey. This is Black Canary obviously and Harley Quinn. So I'm so excited to get to these. I might even read them tonight. I don't know. I'm just, I love Birds of Prey so much. Like if you follow me on Twitter <laughs> or if you listen to my podcast, you know how much I fucking love these women like they're so badass and the whole the movie is fucking genius on so many levels like it's not appreciated enough and i don't care about superheroes i care about women so love these girls so they are my base and i'm glad i have these now because i own two other harley quinn comic books i uh, physically like back in st louis my hometown so now I have another one and then I have a Black Canary one. So love that for me. Anyway, good night to me, but not really because I'm going to be up for another hour or so at least because of the laundry and the sorting out. But you know what I mean. Okay, bye. I will let you know my thoughts and my updates when I have more. <laughs> okay, going to be honest, have not vlogged in a few days, but and I'm walking backwards because this is where the sun is going. And if I walk this way, you can't really see my face. Uh, so <laughs> today is a kind of a beautiful day. And that's why I'm just wearing a sports bra <laughs> under my sweater, which I kind of regret now because it, it is a little bit cold. But I do like my look today. It's very boho chic. I'm going to have to start reading the last two books on my TBR. And I might like sit outside and read, like who knows? We'll see. Right now I have to go get tested and then I have to go eat lunch, but. So I lied, after I got COVID tested, I got some Starbucks, peppermint mocha, and like some fucking uh, pastries. I can't believe Firebreak didn't make it to the final round. Well, actually I can't believe it because it's not that popular, but that's so sad. Ugh. It's fucking old news now, but I've started Light from Uncommon Stars, and I'm really liking it so far. We're following a homeless trans girl who I think is Vietnamese, and she is a violinist, and this violin teacher prodigy who, like, sold her soul to the devil takes her in, but she's also having this romance with this woman who owns a donut shop who's not really a woman. She's, like, an alien creature it's just weird and it's fun and it's also sad so far i think this is the last book i'm gonna read to finish the vlog because i'm gonna dnf the end of men probably because bitch i don't no i don't care so yeah when i finish this the vlog will be over and done and i will have read all the books by women that i wanted to read uh on the goodreads sci-fi nominee list and then I will also live react to who ends up winning. I mean, I am disappointed that Firebreak, which is probably one of my favorites so far, didn't make it on the finals list, I'm pretty sure. But whatevs.
whatevs it's a popularity contest or whatever anyways honestly i think one of the books by men are going to win but what's new so i'll check in with you as i get through this book oh also a life update thing is that i got a nose piercing i got a septum i got a septum piercing yeah i have a few updates i'm about halfway through life of uncommon stars and i am loving this book so much i just think it's so lovely and wonderful we're getting a lot of scenes that mesh the spacey opera stuff as well as like the sapphic queer romance between two like middle-aged older women who actually aren't really like middle-aged or even like women they're like you know they're creatures they're demons they're you know um and our main character is again she's a trans girl and she goes like she's a violinist and she's like a prodigy but it hasn't had like the formal training and so the violinist teacher who is like super prestigious is has like taken her under her wing in many ways um for the purpose of like stealing her soul basically but the relationship is still very beautiful and lovely to read about in the scenes that i was just reading the the teacher takes our main character to the uh mall and to like this really high-end mall and like she gets these beautiful gowns and she feels like she gets like gender affirmed for the first time by like customer service and it was just so sweet and wonderful so that was a really cute update i'm kind of warm so i took off my sweater and now i'm on the goodreads choice awards results announcement page let's take a look i think it's gonna be disappointing because they almost always are so let's view the results Best Fiction, Beautiful World, Where Are You? I know that's right. Yeah, I voted for this because it truly is Best Fiction Book of the Year. Let's go to the Science Fiction results. Okay, so the book that won was Andy Weir's Project Hail Mary. Um, yeah, so it's a man, so none of my, none of my girlies. That's pretty unfortunate, and it won by 92,000 votes. And the book that I wanted to win, the one that I submitted my vote for, was A Psalm for the Wild Built, and that ranked pretty low. But not as low as Firebreak and as Machine Hood. Machine Hood only got like 600 votes, and Firebreak got like 1,000, and those are the best like hard sci-fi books I've read for this vlog so far. <laughs> like A Psalm for the Wild Built is like, softer but it's only got like 10,000 votes and like from uncommon stars got 10,000 votes which is what i'm currently reading and remote control got 10,000 votes and that one i had rated four stars the end of men which i dnf got 14,000 fugitive telemetry which i rated three stars got 15,000 <laughs> uh the echo wife which i dnf got 16,000 and winter's orbit which i rated four stars got 15,000 and then the other ones were written by men so yeah i think that misogyny is bad <laughs> and i need more people to read science fiction by women because this is ridiculous why are the why are more than okay 92 plus 56 was 16 those are the thousands that's that is like over half of the two two hundred eighty thousand votes cast in total so over half of you Goodreads motherfuckers voted for books by men that I'm never going to read because I don't want to read Andy Weir. And I'm not going to read Kazuo Ishiguro. And I'm not going <laughs> the other one was a Star Wars book. Jesus Christ. So yeah, that's really unfortunate. <laughs> but whatever, at least my favorite fiction result won. Let's go look at what else did I vote for? Did they put in the fantasy section? Let's look at the fantasy. Oh my god, a Sarah J. Mass book won Best Fantasy. Ugh. The only one I read was Under the Whispering Door. Oh, I also read The Chosen and the Beautiful, but I gave that one three stars. I also read A Spindle Splinter, which I gave four stars. And The Wolf in the Woodsman, which I read three stars. Again, I these are only I only read books by women in this category, besides the TJ Clunes Under the Whispering Door, which is number two, but like by a far margin, because the Sarah J. Mass book got a hundred thousand votes, and Under the Whispering Door got fifty six thousand. Like what I'm hearing is that y'all hate queer people and y'all hate women. <laughs> <laughs> P. 
people we meet on vacation. I feel like people are mad about that, but I don't know. I don't really read that much romance. I think I voted, for, the only ones I've read in this is uh, actor Eve, Eve, Brown, Eve Brown and I DNF'd, or not DNF, like I'm like partially through one last stop, but I've been partially through one last stop for like a year and a half. So let's go look at the horror results. Grady Hendrix, the final girl support group. I roll, I roll. I think I voted for a dowry of blood, which only got 16k votes. But the final girl support group got 45, so. Oh, wait, no. I voted for all's well, of course. And that got 10k votes, so that's unfortunate. I also read Cover Me With Apples, and that got four stars from me. And that got 2,000 votes, which is, like, significantly below the 7,000 votes that the other book Cackle by Rachel Horse and Harrison got. Like, this is just so silly. Like, y'all don't read is what I'm getting from this. Let's go look at the debut novel results. Best thing you the Spanish love deception? You're kidding me, right? I cannot believe, oh my god. Black Buck, The Prophets, Detransition Baby, they're all like in the lower tiers. There's something wrong with y'all. <laughs> what is going on let's go look at young adult fiction i don't know if i've read that much YA from this past year yeah no i haven't read oh yeah i like the box in the woods and i think i voted for that but um firekeeper's daughter won but by a slim margin ace of spades and the hawthorne legacy seem close to i still need to, i need to read ace of spades everyone loves it so much yeah those are the only categories i really care about should I look in the mystery thriller? I don't know whether I've met. I don't think I've read any of the... Yeah, I only read The Good Daughter, and I thought it was fine. Historical fiction? <gasps> Malibu Rising won! And that book is like a 4.5 star read for me, but I haven't read any of the other ones except The Prophets, which is a really good book as well, so... And it's at the very bottom. It's not even 11 a.m., and I've gotten so many things done. I, what did I do? <laughs> I cleaned my septum piercing. I did my laundry. I ate breakfast. Uh, I finished a book, but not for this vlog, so I won't talk about it. But I did finish my last book for this vlog. And that is Life from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. I rated this four stars. I thought this was absolutely delightful. So queer, very Asian very wonderful so full of music in every way like it's just so good and i loved it so yeah i think i'm finished with this vlog even though i already looked at the fucking goodreads awards and you know that wasn't great but alas swear to be over dramatic intro to my lover can I go where you go? Can we always be this close?